Hello and welcome to the last lesson of chapter one. Lesson 1-1, 1 1-1, -1, 1 excuse me, 1-10, we'll look at the coordinate plane. And we have two objectives tonight. First, you will be able to name coordinates and quadrants in the coordinate plane. And two, you'll be able to graph points in the coordinate plane. All right, so first, we have a little bit of a warm-up, and it tells you to graph the numbers on a number line. And for number one, we have to graph negative two, one, and negative five. Well, to start, it would probably be good to have numbers on our number line. So I'm just finding about the midpoint, and then I'm numbering some of these. My number line is a little bit long, but that's okay. I'll just use what I need, negative three, negative four, negative five negative six, negative seven. There, my number line goes from negative seven to positive seven. And then I graph them. Negative two is there, one is there, and negative five is there. All right, I did number one, go ahead and do number two. Please pause me now. All right, your first job should have been numbering the number line like I did above. And again, just find about the midpoint and then start numbering. There we go. And then start finding those numbers. So 0 is there, 2, and negative 4. All right. So you know how to graph with just a plain old number line. Today, we're going to take it a step further because we actually are using a coordinate plane. And a coordinate plane is really made up of two number lines. If I can straighten that out. This is basically what a number line looks like, or excuse me, a coordinate plane looks like. And in fact, I have one on the next page. All right, so a coordinate plane is a plane with a horizontal and a vertical number line. All right, so I have my horizontal number line in green with arrows at the end, meaning it keeps going on, and then I have in red my vertical number line. All right. Now, there are four key parts to a number line, and we're going to look at each one. First is the x-axis. If I can pull that out, there we go. And that ooh, is this horizontal number line. So this one in green is considered the x-axis. So the one that goes across that horizontal line is the x-axis. Then we have the opposite. If it lets me grab it. And that is the y-axis. There we go. And this is the vertical number line. All right, so that's the one I had in red. So the one that goes across is the X. The one that goes up and down is the Y. You might want to repeat that to yourself a couple times because this is important. We're going to be using graphing all year. Then we have the origin. There we go. And this is where the two lines intersect. So if you take a look, you can see where they intersect right there. There we go. And maybe I'll erase this green and red line for you. There you go. So where the two lines intersect, that's called the origin. That's the starting point. And then finally, there are what we call quadrants. All right? And these are the four separate areas in this number line. So we have one here. We have another one here. We have another one here and the fourth one here. And in fact, that's how they're written. This is quadrant one. This is quadrant two. This is quadrant three. And this is quadrant four. Now, you're going to be asked questions about quadrants and so on in this lesson. So it is important that you know where it starts and where it goes. So the first quadrant is this top right-hand corner. Then it goes counterclockwise, so the opposite way of a clock. 
So that's the basic. All right, now we're going to look at how you can graph on a coordinate plane. And first we need to know what an ordered pair is. And that basically tells you where those coordinates or that point is located. So it gives the coordinates and the location of a point. And it looks like this. You have the x coordinate and then you have the y coordinate. So whatever one is the x, and you have the y number. It's very important that you get that in the right order. All right, so the x-coordinate tells you how far you go on that horizontal axis, and the y-coordinate tells you how much up and down. So, for example, A, negative 2, 1. This tells us where we move on the x. This tells us where we are on the y. All right, and again, I have my little graph here, and it shows me both x and y. So on the x, I'm at negative 2. So I find negative 2 on that number line. But then I, I have to go up 1 because it is 1 for the y. So my point is there at negative 2, 1. All right? And then we have b, 0, 0. So on the x-axis, it is 0. So I find 0. And then on the y, well, it's at 0. So that would be my answer. For B. C, well, we have to find 6 on the x coordinate, and then you go to negative 3. So go ahead and graph C and D, and then when you're back, or when you're all done, go ahead and click play again and see what you get. All right, so your job was to graph C and D. Let's see how you did. C, I'm going to do in red, I think. And I had to find 6 on my number line, which really is out here, I guess. And then I have to go down to negative 3. So my answer for C is right there. And then D, we have 4, 3. So again, you have to find 4 on the x-axis. And then you go to 3 on the y. So 4 and 3, there I am. There's where D should be. All right, so that was the first example. Now, number two, they're switching it around on us. They want us to write the coordinates this time for the point given and then tell what quadrant it's in. Well, again, when we do a coordinate, we have it like this, and then you tell the x where you are on the x-axis and then where you are on the y. So if I take a look on the x-axis, I'm going to highlight that in red. I need to find where it is on this number line. And if I take a look, well, it's at negative 2. And then for y, well, that means I have to look at this vertical axis. I look at where that point is, and it's down here between negative 2 and negative 4. Well, that must be in between at negative 3. So our coordinate here is negative 2, negative 3. And now we have to tell what quadrant it is in. And I told you before, this first top right-hand corner is cord, uh, quadrant 1, then it is quadrant 2, then we have quadrant 3, and then we have quadrant 4. This doesn't change. It's always that same order. So where do you find G? Well, in quadrant 3. Quadrant 3 would be our answer. And we're going to keep on moving. Oh, and now we have to graph quite a few coordinates here. Graph a figure with these vertices. M is negative 3, 3. N is negative 3, negative 2. P, 1, 3. And then coordinate R is negative, or excuse me, 1, negative 2. Then it says name the figure. So when you're all done, you should be able to figure out what a figure is by looking at it. There we go. So, we're going to do the first one together to show you how I want it done, and then you're going to do the next three. So, we're going to graph uh, coordinate M, which is negative 3, 3. So, I find negative 3, and then I have to go up on the y-axis to 3. So, there is M. All right, your job is now to do N, P, and R. Go ahead and graph those, connect the dots, and when you're all done, try to figure out what figure that is. Uh, pause me now. All right. Uh, let's see what we end up with. N, we should have been at negative 3, negative 2. Let's see. P is at 1, 3. 
And then r is at 1, negative 2. And if I connect those dots, this is what I end up with. And what does that figure look like? Well, to me, it looks like a rectangle. It's not a square because the sides are not all the same size. There we go. So you should get that figure, and you should have recognized it was a rectangle. All right. Final thing, our quick check here quick check here and then you're all done and it says draw a coordinate grid and then graph each point now this is a good example because we aren't always given a coordinate plane we sometimes have to draw it and that's okay so we're gonna draw one first so we draw our horizontal axis and then we draw a vertical one And do your best to make it as even as possible. I'm not expecting it to be perfect. But, you know, just try to make sure all the dashes are at about the same width. All right? So now we have to graph. And I'm going to leave these five up to you to do. So go ahead and do the five. And when you're all done, we'll come back and check your answer. Go ahead and pause me now. All right. Well, let's see how you did. So S, I would have had to go to 2, then 3. So there's S. T is at 2, and then negative 3. So this time I go out 2 again, but I have to go down to negative 3. That's where T is. U is at negative 2, and then up 3. Again, it started with a negative 2, so I had to go to the left on that x-axis. Number 4 is at K is 0. So on the x-axis, it's 0. Then you go down to negative 3. That is k. And then l is 3, 0. So there is 3, and I don't go any up or down. So that would be l. All right. So your graph should look something like this. And again, if you didn't get them all right, just try to check back, see what you did. And if you still can't quite get it, come ask me tomorrow morning. Uh, have a great night because that is your lesson. See you tomorrow.